passenger aircraft. A stewardess explains emergency procedures to you before every flight. A passenger steamship. Soon after the beginning of each cruise, the passengers are given emergency information during a drill. Common carrier and charter buses. They might not give you much emergency drill or evacuation procedure information. School bus operators do. This is done not just because it's required by law. Your passengers are young, lacking experience, and they will look to you for leadership. At least twice during each school year, each pupil who is transported in a school vehicle shall be instructed in safe riding practices and participate in emergency evacuation drills. Each pupil who is transported in a school vehicle. This rule applies to any pupil who rides in a school bus at any time. It applies to the girl who rides her bike to school and then maybe only once a year goes on a school bus to a basketball game at another school. It applies to the little boy whose mother takes him to school in the family car should he ever ride in the school bus on a field trip. In fact, the rate of accidents and student fatalities is higher on the special trips, higher than the rate of accidents for buses that perform a regular morning and afternoon run between the school and home. So everyone who does or could ride a school bus must participate in evacuation drills with the possible exception of severely handicapped children. Even so, even if your state exempts severely handicapped children from participating in the actual drill, you will still need to establish a plan for their evacuation in an emergency. In your school, this may be handled with your special education director. Why have these drills twice a year? Fires. Train crossing accidents. Flooding or high waters. Exposure to poisons or toxic fumes. Accident, including rollover, even when there are no injuries. A potential for an accident. Falling, flooding, colliding. If any of these should ever happen to your bus, you have to know how to get everyone off the bus quickly. So, evacuation drills are practice, although they will be in slightly slower motion. This is because everything is being practiced and must be done right, and there is not the hurry that will exist in an actual emergency. To hurry too much increases the risk of danger to the student during the drill. The actual emergency, by its very nature, will cause a speed up. Everything will be moving past then. As a bus driver, remember that bus riders include everyone who rides on school buses or may ride on school buses. This may include teachers, bus assistants, coaches. In fact, it may even include some parents. It is always a good idea for school personnel to observe drills so that they will know what the children have been trained to do. For parents who may assist on a field trip, you may only be able to discuss the procedures with them. Possibly they can be provided with a pamphlet or other written procedures. Let them know what to expect and what you want each of them to do should there be an emergency. The scene of an accident is no place to have untrained adults trying to direct children who have been trained and may know more about what to do. Because all of the action has slowed down somewhat, the likelihood of a student being injured during a drill is very remote, but it may be a good idea to have a school nurse present should an accident happen. You want the drill to train the students so that they will be able to take care of themselves in a real emergency, even if you should be unable to help them. How do you do this? First, Preparation for the evacuation drills is best done in the classroom before the drill is conducted. Here, there should be videos and other visual aids available to help the instructor. But even a chalk talk session helps the students to see what they will be expected to do. 
Maybe the school can devote all or part of an assembly to advise students of the importance of the evacuation drills and offer other suggestions. Also, written notice should go out to all parents, informing them that their children will be required to participate in an emergency bus evacuation drill at least twice during each school year and that these drills will be supervised by school personnel. As a suggestion, the first drill should probably be held during the first few weeks of school, and the second drill should be held in the spring. Now, the drills themselves, where should they be held? They should always be held on the school grounds. The area where they are held should be clear of all traffic and any special hazards. While the drills are held where there is no traffic, the students should be reminded that actual emergencies may occur on the highways or streets where there could be other traffic. The students should be given information as to how to conduct themselves so as to be protected from traffic. Your school may already have a procedure in place as to the scope and size of the drill. Some schools line up enough buses to hold the entire student body, and everyone does the drill at the same time. Others may use only one or two buses and bring students out of their classrooms in groups. Now, before the drills are conducted, everyone must prepare, the drill leader, bus drivers, teachers, students, and in the case of some parents, who may occasionally ride school buses on field trips or such, the parents. This preparation may be a chalk talk, a video demonstration, or an assembly of all the students, or simply one class in the classroom. This is the time to point out some things that should be in order. In fact, should always be in order before a bus is used. Everyone should be reminded that nothing is supposed to be left in the aisle or between seats, such as a broom stored behind the back seats. Another item that is often overlooked is loose shoelaces. No student boarding a bus should have loose shoelaces. Everyone should understand that during an emergency, students will have to leave their books and other belongings on the bus. This even includes their jackets, unless the weather is bad and jackets are needed for protection from the weather. Those are some important little items. Then the meeting should cover the drills that will be conducted. There are three ways to conduct an evacuation drill. One, everyone goes out the front door. Be sure each student uses the handrail and steps on each step, no jumping or running. Two, everyone uses the back door or left side door. Caution them about bumping their head on the top of the door frame. Emergency doors are quite low. Three, everyone uses the door they can get out of the quickest, evacuating from both doors at the same time. Remember that the door they can get out of the quickest may not be the nearest door. In a given time, more students can go out the front than the back. Those exiting at the front hardly slow down as they round the corner and go down the steps. At the rear, each student usually pauses, puts their feet together, squats or sits, then glides off. They may have to wait for the person in front of them to clear the landing zone before they leave the bus. Anyone who does not follow proper procedures should be directed to return to the bus to try again. Two drivers working together can increase the safety of a drill. One maintains discipline or directs the evacuation from inside the bus, while the other watches how the children come out the door. It will be a good idea to have a teacher or some other adult to monitor the students' activities in the area where they wait after leaving the bus. Why is it important that no one has loose shoelaces? Stepping on a shoelace can cause tripping. A child falling out of a bus will be injured. Most buses have emergency exit windows, and some have roof hatches. These should be explained, demonstrated if possible, so that your students know how to open and use them. Demonstrating and practicing of the opening of such exits is time well spent. Do not permit anyone to actually use a window or roof hatch during a drill. Emphasize that they are never to open those exits without permission. 
except in an actual emergency. It is important for students to know that once they leave the bus, they should immediately go to a safe position at least 100 feet from the bus and from any danger. They should stay in a group, and unless the ground is wet or muddy, you might have them sit in a large circle. This will help you or your designated helper to make a head count and may lessen the tendency for anyone to wander around. In an actual emergency, it is important to know if all students have been accounted for. Injured people often wander away from an accident. If possible, you need to keep a record of any bus rider who leaves, whether by ambulance or with their parents. If a parent finds their child at the scene of an accident, they will usually take the child with them. If you are not notified or fail to see the student leave, you may be searching beneath the bus and behind every rock and tree in the area, looking for a child who is safe at home. Instruct your bus riders that if they are able to always let you know before they leave an accident scene. Where should the students go after they evacuate the bus? To a position of safety, at least 100 feet from the bus. They should be away from traffic and all other dangers and obstacles. Many drivers assign student helpers or safety patrols to assist with evacuations. It is surprising how much help even small children can be. You will need permission from their parents. If you use student helpers, you may assign one or two to stand at the front door and two to open and assist at the emergency door. The fourth helper leads the group to a position of safety at least 100 feet away and takes a head count. Your remaining helpers carry the emergency equipment off the bus. This will be the first aid kit, fire extinguisher, and reflective triangles. You want to make it very clear to your student helpers that they are only removing the emergency equipment from the bus. They are not expected to use those items, and they should not. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to realize the position you would be in if a child was burned from fighting a fire or was hit by a car while setting out reflective triangles. If your bus has a two-way radio or cellular phone, show your students how to use it. You may not be able to in an emergency. Tell them that after they have used the radio, the microphone should be placed outside the window so that communication can be continued without going back in the bus. Caution your students to never re-enter the bus until the emergency has passed. If you carry an emergency telephone number list, show them where to find it. If you have a radio, why would you need an emergency telephone number list? If the radio failed to work after the crash, the telephone list would be useful. Here is one way of conducting a drill or an actual emergency evacuation. Stop the bus and set the parking brake. Put a manual transmission in low gear. For automatics, use park or neutral. Many large bus transmissions don't have park positions on the gear selector. Start the four-way hazard warning lights. Turn off the ignition and put the key in your pocket. Open the door and face the passengers. Announce, this is a drill. Remain seated and wait your turn. We are going out the front door. Stand just behind the first row of seats facing the front of the bus. Release each row, beginning on your right, then your left. Move back a row and repeat. Continue until the bus is empty. Remind your passengers to walk, not run. Check to be sure the bus is empty. Go to the students and critique the drill. Why do you not want students to set out the reflective triangles? Because it is too dangerous for students to be near the road where they might be hit. If your passengers see you timing the drill, the implication to them is that you want the drill to be done quickly. It may promote hurrying, which greatly increases the risk of injury. If you want the drill timed, it might be better that the students don't know it. You could have someone else, such as a teacher or administrator, do the timing for you. 
If you think the students can get off the bus faster, tell them in terms of what to do or not do, without using hurry-type words such as faster or quicker. Use terms like better. After a group has been through an evacuation drill under your direction, you might want to have them practice once as though you were unable to help. This drill will show how well they really know the procedure. It is a good idea to discuss what-if situations. For example, what would be the best procedure if the front of the bus was burning? In this example, the correct answer would be to leave through the rear door, with passengers in the front of the bus leaving first. That way, those who are in danger will be the first ones off the bus. And of course, the opposite procedure would be followed in case of a fire in the back of the bus. Another what if, a bus stalled in the path of an approaching train. Use both doors for the evacuation. But once your passengers are on the ground, they should run away from the bus and the track so that wreckage from the bus won't hit them. One of the dangers in holding bus evacuation drills is that of a child falling or landing wrong when coming out the back door. Remember, if a child is injured while escaping from a burning bus, you may be congratulated for saving a life. If a child is injured during a drill, you'll be blamed for having students practice a dangerous procedure. In conducting drills, safety is always more important than speed. The actual event will cause everyone to speed up, then everyone will want to hurry. But if this drill is conducted properly, it can show the importance of moving as quickly as possible, but safely. To reinforce your passengers' knowledge of evacuation procedures, you might want to use the alternate row, front to rear method of leaving the bus each day when you arrive at the school. This provides a daily reminder of the proper steps. On alternate days or weeks, you can reverse the procedure and have those in the rear of the bus offload first coming down the aisle and exiting through the front door. This is exactly like the drill simulating a fire in the back of the bus. Why must you constantly remind your students to not run? Without being reminded, they will run. Any hurrying in a drill can lead to injuries. The evacuation drill should be interesting and a relaxed event. The idea is to train the students as to what they should do in an emergency so that they will have confidence and less fear. But you cannot allow the drill to get out of control. There is no horseplay. That must be stopped immediately before someone gets hurt. Everyone will know that the drill is not the real thing. But it is important. It is important preparation for the real thing. Admittedly, it is preparation for something that we think and hope will never happen. But should it happen, each of these drills can mean so much. <laughs>